What is up guys? Happy Monday. Welcome to the show. We got a lot to talk about today and I can already see you guys drumming up in the comments talking about Lady Gaga and Dylan Mulvaney. This has been a story that's been trending today but really has been trending ever since International Women's Day and we are going to get into that. We're also going to talk about Lyft having an option for women to request non-binary or other female drivers and whether or not that cancels itself out as far as what you're trying to achieve there. Plus, a young woman goes viral on X for having a country accent and doing manual labor, and uh, people are hating on her, people are defending her. We're going to unpack all of that. Plus, what is going on with Kate Middleton? People think she's missing. Others are speculating that she is deceased, and nobody has seen her uh, relatively since Christmas Day. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But first, let's get into Lady Gaga and Dylan Mulvaney. Now, I'll show you this little post here on International Women's Day. This was posted by Lady Gaga. I muted it. And uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about what she's saying. She's saying, you know, don't listen to the haters and the rejection. You can be whoever it is you want to be. You can do whatever it is you want to do. You know, it's a it's a motivational message that she shared with some soft piano music whilst hugging Dylan Mulvaney. Now, this went out on TikTok, of course, on Dylan Mulvaney's page, as you can see. And, you know, some people had something to say. <laughs> I am one of those people who had something to to say, considering, again, this went out on International Women's Day. So we all know what the message is that's trying to be brought forth. Now, I will go ahead and say this is no surprise at all from somebody like Lady Gaga. We all know Lady Gaga's background. If you're a fan of Lady Gaga and her music, you know that she is very much pro LGBTQIA plus 2S, whatever all the different uh, letters are these days. She's made that extremely cr a clear from the beginning of her career up until now with her whole fan base, the little monsters being, you know, a largely gay and, and queer audience. So this is by no means a surprise. It's just so interesting to see somebody use a day like International Women's Day to highlight a small subset of the population that seems to think that they are women. And interestingly enough, there's been some backlash also received from the trans community of if you are going to support a trans 
trans woman on this day or highlight the plights of trans women on this day, why would you choose somebody like Dylan Mulvaney? It seems like out of all the trans people in the world, Dylan Mulvaney gets all the praise, all the pedestalization, and is constantly on the cover of this and the video of that being celebrated as a woman for this. And it is seemingly endless. Now, you, of course, know how I feel about this. This is not a woman uh, being celebrated on International Women's Day. It is, in fact, a man who believes that they are somehow a woman being celebrated on International Women's Day. Now, we're no stranger to talking about Dylan Mulvaney on this channel, although I haven't done it in quite some time. I sort of got over it. I'm like, you know what? We need to let it rest. Of course, on an ideological level, I still very much disagree with the pursuits that this person is undertaking and the sort of message that they are promoting to a widely young audience. But I was so tired of, of hearing the name. You also know, I didn't tell you the full story of this, and I won't tell you the full story of this, because this was a, a conversation had in confidence, that one time I went out to a bar uh, where some celebrity birthday party was happening to be happening, and the manager at the bar was like, we knew each other. He, he was a fan of the show. He said, you know what? Come on in. You can you can enter. You can hang out at the bar, play some pool, whatever it is you want to do. Now, little did I know Dylan Mulvaney was going to be showing up to this celebrity birthday party. So, of course, I took the opportunity to walk up and say, you know what? I don't hold you know any ill will towards you. Uh, and I, I just disagree ideologically with where you stand on these issues. I won't get into the ins and outs of that conversation because, again, it's uh, it's confidential. But that's where I stand on Dylan Mulvaney currently. I don't understand why somebody would take a day like International Women's Day of all days to highlight somebody who is, come on y'all, so clearly not a woman. I could understand Lady Gaga doing this on some other day, utilizing her platform in this way, as she has done throughout the duration of her career, but to specifically use a day like International Women's Day kind of feels like a little a little cheap shot to the biological women and of course a lot of people felt this way and she did receive quite a bit of backlash she decided to respond to that backlash though and i will read that here this was on instagram lady gaga says it's appalling to me that a post about national women's day by dylan mulvaney and me would be met with such vitriol and hatred when i see a newspaper reporting on hatred but calling it backlash i feel it is important to clarify that hatred is hatred and this kind of hatred is violence okay so the the words that are you know stated in response to what lady gaga has done and what dylan mulvaney has posted that is apparently also violence she says backlash would imply people who love or respect dylan and me didn't like something we did which that is not the definition of backlash, but I digress. This is not backlash, she says, this is hatred. But it is not surprising given the immense work that it's obvious we still have to do as a society to make room for transgender lives to be cherished and upheld by all of us. I feel very protective in this moment, not only of Dylan, but of the trans community who continues to lead the way with their endless grace and inspiration in the face of constant degradation, intolerance, and physical, verbal, and mental violence. I certainly do not speak for this community, but I have something to say. I hope all women will come together to honor us all on International Women's Day. And may we do that always until the day that all women are celebrated equally, that all people are celebrated equally, a day where people of all gender identities are celebrated on whichever holiday speaks to them, because people of all gender identities and races deserve peace and dignity. May we all come together and be loving, accepting, warm, welcoming. May we all stand and honor the complexity and challenges of trans life that we do not know, but can seek to understand and have compassion for. I love people too much to allow hatred to be referred to as backlash. People deserve better. Now, this is a really interesting way of sort of placing yourself in a position of never being criticized for the positions you take and the actions you take, and especially what you promote to an audience, which for both Lady Gaga and Dylan Mulvaney have many, many young members. Backlash is in fact not 
hatred. Calling out the truth is in fact not hatred. It doesn't mean that you want to commit the erasure of a people or get rid of a group of people who think in a certain way or have a certain identity. And it certainly does not mean that you want to commit an act of violence against the community that you are giving backlash towards. Now, a lot of people will read this post from Lady Gaga and say, oh, that's so warm and welcoming and she's handling this which, with such grace and dignity and respect. But in reality, what she's doing is safeguarding herself from very valid criticism when it comes to what she's promoting as a celebrity. And that's really the, the end of it. It's not hatred to call out the truth and say, in fact, this was somebody who's born a biological male who, if you investigate far enough, will have, you know, male chromosomes and for the most part, scientifically, will always be identified as a, a man, except that we have now decided uh, in a large part as a community that we can allow somebody to self-identify as a woman and then claim that identity. And in the case of Dylan Mulvaney, what did that involve? Showing themselves on TikTok, throwing on a wig and makeup and dresses and sort of cosplaying a caricature of what it means to be a woman, when at the end of the day, this person will never truly understand what it means to be a woman. And it's okay that they try, you know, especially in adulthood. If you're an adult that wants to make this choice for yourself and you want to go down this path and subscribe yourself to this sort of agenda and ideology, by all means, make your own adult decision. But that does not safeguard you from the yes, backlash and criticism that you will receive for doing so, because this has much broader implications in the space of women's rights and privileges and spaces in the space of science. There are so many things that a statement like this that might seem sort of innocuous or you, you might ask, why can't you just understand this person? There are broader implications here that impact us every single day and lead to a lot of harm. So again, backlash is not hatred. Backlash is not violence. And that's really what it is at the end of the day. Of course, the leftists are really mad at me on Twitter for saying that. But y'all, what can I say? It's true. It's true. And it reminds me, like we talked about J.K. Rowling on Friday, same similar situation. But she's got that famous quote that it simply isn't hate to speak the truth. And in the case of Friday's episode that we talked about, there was a, a person who was attempting to coerce J.K. Rowling at uh, th under threat of law to calling the police mm -hmm. on her, uh, saying you need to not misgender me. You need to call me by what I prefer to be called, and I need to. I'm going to compel your speech now. Thankfully, the law came down not on the side of the uh, person who was complaining and accusing J.K. Rowling of transphobia. But in this case, I see a similar attack where Lady Gaga is kind of uh, attempting to impose her view of the fact that uh, or in her view that um, trans women are women on everybody else but framing it as you're hateful if you disagree and framing it as i'm doing this because i love and care about people so much that i'm compelled to come out and uh, pedestal Dylan Mulvaney on International Women's Day. And that is that is an aggressive thing to do. Mm -hmm. And it is it, it's framed as this compassionate thing that I'm just I'm having to do this just out of love. But in reality, you're saying to everybody who dares disagree with you or dares say that we're, we believe that biological women are women and biological men are men, as has been the case through all of history and as is testified to by science. Um, if you have that view, then no, you're you're suddenly a hater and th th she's imposing her view on other people and using International Women's Day to do so. And it comes on top of all that at the expense of actual women who should be the ones being celebrated and thought about and on center stage uh, on such a day. Yeah. And mind you, it's OK that she has the opinion, but it's also yep. OK to state our opinion in response to hers. That's really what it is at the end of the day. And I want to challenge this idea that backlash towards what she posted is somehow lacking in compassion and dignity and respect. Now, mind you, there's going to be people who just throw out hurtful comments and want to bash Dylan and want to bash Lady Gaga. And maybe their their comments are not, you know, built on a foundation of respect or dignity or actual care for the people who are they are involving in their comments. But 
you can be compassionate while also telling the truth. You can treat somebody with dignity and respect while telling them something that they don't want to hear or that they may not be ready to hear. And of course, we hear the same arguments over and over again. You know, you don't tell somebody who's anorexic, yeah, right, you do need to use lose a few pounds. And I agree with your body dysmorphia. That is, in fact, not the compassionate thing to do. And if you swap out anorexia for the gender dysphoria and this whole trans argument that's going back and forth and will continuously go back and forth. The same can be said for that. It's not compassionate to just take somebody at their word and self-identification and to change and morph the reality that we live in in order to fit that person's self-identification. And yeah, like Taylor said, uh, we're the, the, the slope is slippery, y'all, because we just had a girl arrested in Portland for misgendering a transgender woman and referring to him as a man. And she actually is now on two years of probation and has to serve 50 hours of community service for having done that. So if we allow this to continue and just continuously validate anybody who has some sort of self-identification that they want to take on, guess what that means? The people who refuse to do that, who are actually living in truth and choosing to espouse that truth, are the ones who are going to be punished legally. And it's going to come in the form of fines and jail and probation and community service. So it is imperative that we continue to call this out when we see it and to state, you know what? This is, in fact, not the truth. I know that you guys want to support this and, and show it to the world, but trans women are trans women, and women are women. And, you know, as I said, if, it, they, if they make misgendering illegal, your girl's going to jail. <laughs> I'm going and, straight to jail. <laughs> and this has come up a few times in the crazy times that we live in, but I always go back to that uh, Alexander Sol Solzhenitsyn quote where he says, let the lie come into the world, but not through me. And he lived through watching his society through social pressure, through legal pressure, through institutionalized lies in the government and through lies that were bought into by everybody who was under the totalitarian mindset of the of uh, communist Russia, the USSR when he lived there. He he wrote a whole book documenting how the gulags happened, how uh, the entire Russian nation descended into tyranny. And he said he, his basic conclusion was the way it happened was everyday people uh, started to be willing to tell lies that they knew to be false, started to be willing to go along just to get along at the expense of the truth. And that, that's a that's an extreme example. But like you said, we just saw somebody jailed for uh, for misgendering somebody in the U.S. Mm -hmm. or not jailed, but uh, but indicted and, and, and prosecuted or whatever for for doing so. Yeah. And there are uh, many other such instances that are extremely alarming. And so to your point, this it, it is imperative that at this moment we make sure that we are telling the truth and if the lies coming into the world don't let it come through you and here's one example of that it's a perfect segue into our next story you guys know the app lyft uh, that you use if you need a car to come pick you up take you to the airport your restaurant go see your friends whatever the case may be now we spoke about this on the show before lyft was coming out with a program and uh they called it Women Plus Connect. And essentially what this was, we, women were complaining and saying, you know what, I'd love to call an Uber or I'd love to call a Lyft, but sometimes a man shows up and it's a creepy guy or and I don't want to deal with that. And then women drivers on Uber and Lyft were saying, yeah, I, I love driving for Uber and Lyft. It, it makes me money, but sometimes I get aggressive male passengers or I'm driving at night and I don't think I want a male passenger in my car. Now, this is an active acknowledgement of the biological difference is between men and women, and we all know that women function at a biological disadvantage when it comes to things like strength and power compared to men. So it's perfectly reasonable that a woman would say, oh, maybe I don't want, maybe I want a female driver, or maybe I want a female passenger right now because that makes me feel safer. Now, Lyft took it upon themselves to solve this problem, so they say, by creating a program known as Woman Plus connect. Now take a look here. Now th where they went wrong 
in this program is that it connects women and non-binary drivers with women and non-binary riders in order to make them feel safe. Now, this post asks, would you want somebody like this, uh, you know, to be your driver? Would this make you feel safe? I'm not going to dog on this person in particular. I have no idea who this man is. I have no idea what he's like. I have no idea what his character is like, or if he's going to be aggressive, harmful, whatever the case may be. But think about this, right? <laughs> if I, as a woman, request a female driver to show up and pick me up at two o'clock in the morning and it allows both women and non-binary people who do you think is going to take advantage of that loophole who do you think is going to raise their hand and suddenly say i identify as non-binary and they're going to start driving women around who request female drivers now, I'm not saying that they're doing this for nefarious purposes to attack women or to put them in a bad situation. It could be just to troll, honestly, at this point. But if you allow both non-binary identifying and women drivers to sign up for this program, you have defeated the purpose of creating the program in the first place. It's very similar to what we saw in New Jersey in California, where they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to allow men who identify as women to be able to fill out paperwork and transfer over to a female uh, jailing or prison facility. Guess what happened? As soon as that legislation was passed, as soon as they told prisoners that they were capable of doing that, the rate of men identifying as women skyrockets within the prison system. That's funny because I thought, you know, transgenderism was a very small part of the population. Why are there more transgender people relative to the general population in prison than anywhere else in the United States of America? It's almost as if male predators want to take advantage of a door that you've left open for them to take advantage of. And I can see the exact same thing happening with a company like Lyft allowing non-binary drivers to connect through this Woman Plus Connect program. But for the sake of, I don't know, political correctness and, you know, just being PC, I guess they have to allow non-binary people into this program because women can also identify as non as, as non-binary while wanting female drivers. <sighs> Happy Women's Day. We can no longer create safe spaces for women. That's what it comes down to with this ideology. If this is the the idea that is ruling the day of what constitutes womanhood and anyone who identifies as a woman, then we can no longer create safe spaces for women in bathrooms. We can no longer have safe female competitions. And you can't have a an option for a woman to request a woman driver because this loophole will continue to exist as long as we allow self ID to be the standard for womanhood. So great job, uh, International Women's Day, everybody. Well done. We have effectively erased women's safety in the name of advancing womanhood. Yeah, dude, it's a great it's a great year for predators, I guess. Like I, I, it's a great year for predators. Now you can drive around women who are actively requesting other female drivers. You can get in the cars of women who are actively requesting female passengers. You can move over to female prisons by simply identifying as a woman. Woman. You can go into our locker rooms, our spas, our bathrooms simply by identifying as a woman. You can commit crimes and then be booked in the system as a woman and then possibly placed in a female prison. You can receive leniency on those crimes and on your sentencing based on your identification as a woman. It is a wonderful day and a wonderful year for people who want to take advantage of other people and women in particular. Mix all that with the fact that if you are a predator of young people now we're going to call you a minor attracted person rather than a pedophile. It's just crazy, guys. It's crazy. The world that we're living in all for the sake of what? And it did not used to be like this. Not even 10 years ago. Not even 10 years ago was the world like this. And we're going to talk about that in another sense from this old immigration clip that is popping up of Obama. And we're going to go on a tangent just for a moment to give you a break on the gender bender news that we're experiencing right now. I want to show you this clip from 2009. Uh, you guys know immigration is a real big issue for me on this channel and uh, it's going to continue to be. We have a big video about that coming out tomorrow. But let's listen to Barack Obama in 2009 talk about illegal immigration into the United States of America. This is not going to be a free ride. It's not going to be some instant amnesty. What's going to happen is you are going to pay a significant fine. You are going to learn English. You are going to 
you are going to go to the back of the line so that you don't get ahead of somebody who was in Mexico City applying legally. But after you've done these things over a certain period of time, you can earn your citizenship. So that it's not, it's not something that is guaranteed or automatic. You've got to earn it. But over time, you give people an opportunity. Now, it only works, though, if you do all the pieces. I, I think the American people, they appreciate and believe in immigration. But they can't have a situation where you just have half a million people pouring over the border without any kind of mechanism to control it. So we've got to deal with that at the same time as we deal in a humane fashion with folks who have put down roots here, have become our neighbors, have become our friends. They may have children who are U.S. citizens. That's the kind of comprehensive approach that we have to take. Huh. No wonder people were fans of Obama in 2009. He was speaking reasonably. And now look where we're at as a nation. And he his numbers were half a million. Half a million was concerning as far as illegal immigration into this country. How about 11 million? How about 11 million illegal immigrants into the country? Does that, is that at all concerning? Now, if you give this sort of speech in the United States of America, you're labeled a racist. You're labeled a racist. And, you know, tack on the fact that you might refer to these people as, as illegal. That's another faux pas. You're also a racist. Now, I just had to divert to show you that video because when I watched it, I was dumb founded at just how much the rhetoric has shifted and changed to where something said like that, that one minute and 15 seconds that you just watched is now racist. Now it's, that's not an okay thing to say about illegal immigration while millions of people pour into our southern border. And again, it doesn't make you anti-immigrant. It just means that you want people to come here legally. I have a father who entered this country and is now a legal citizen. I have a boyfriend who was just made a U.S. citizen and went through the proper legal channel. I can appreciate immigration to the utmost extent so long as it is through our actual policy and not circumvented by just entering the U.S. border and, uh, you know, being granted a, a stay here, which is happening right now. People are being flown into the United States with your moolah, with your money, baby, with your money, baby. They are being flown into this country. 2009, for real, 2009. Such saner times, right? And the fact that I just can't get over the fact that he was like, I'm going to hit him with a really big number here yep. 500,000. Right. You know, well, it's like when uh, Dwight in his fantasies, like, I'm making $40,000 a year in my or whatever. It's like similar energy where Gosh. Obama's just like, this is the a number that's going to blow everyone's mind. And our reality, fast forward 15 years or so, is millions 11 yep. million i think you said just utter insanity and i i'm excited about tomorrow's video where we get into this and its relation to the lake and riley story and talk about the implications that all this massive amount of legal immigration has on the electoral college potentially mm -hmm. the amount of seats congressionally that states have and how there is a big incentive for a certain party to want this to happen and allow it to happen um, but I will divest or digress for now and let that uh, be made tomorrow. Yes, definitely keep an eye out for tomorrow's video. Um, it's a more serious one, but an important one nonetheless. Now we're going to move on to less serious matters. I've been seeing this homegirl's face all over Twitter. I mean, this girl got millions of views and you're going to watch this video and say, I have no idea why this went viral. But if you are on X, you will know this girl because you can't run from this video in particular. I'm going to read you the original post. This was posted by a, a young woman named Samira. She says, this account, this accent needs to be illegal and women should be banned from doing manual labor, labor like this. There is nothing feminine about American women. American women are literally men. <laughs> now, Samira is sort of a red pilly type woman on X. She talks down on American women all the time, says that they're men, uh, advocates for passport bros to fly out of the United States to go and find their significant others and find more submissive feminine women. But let's look at the video in question uh, that was posted by a young woman named Hannah on TikTok and see what's the deal with this accent that needs to be illegal and the fact that women should not be able to do manual labor. And I specifically want to shout out the men in this case. You're going to have to let me know in the comments down below how you feel about 
about Hannah and whether or not she deserves the hate that she's been receiving on the platform. Good morning, y'all. Quick update on the house because I've been pretty terrible about giving y'all these. Um, we took a little break for noodling season and to put out boxes. Now that it's dried in, we can do it at our own pace. But here she is. We're going to stain all that wood a darker brown and the shutters when we get that on. We'll have handrails, of course. There's the carport over there. Quick run through. All these trusses are going to be exposed and we're gonna have old tin in the ceiling. Got daddy and Paul up there working on a wall we're gonna put up for the upstairs office. And we got Def Leppard playing in the background, of course. <laughs> Back porch, beautiful view. This is legit the video. This is legit the video that got tens of millions of views of people commenting on uh, Hannah and Samira's comment. Now, Hannah is clearly a, a beautiful woman. She's she's chilling, got a little uh, mascara, some eyeliner on, and she's doing some work on her house, presumably with her family and, and seemingly her husband. Now, this went all over the place, and people had to give their two cents. People were saying, the accent is so disgusting. She's a tomboy, and women aren't attracted to tomboys, and they don't like women who do masculine work or whatever. I, I don't know. They're there's somebody for everybody out there. I don't know that I've ever really heard a man say that he's not attracted to a woman who does manual labor or who like who likes to work on a house. I think attraction for men is pretty simple. Uh, they look at you and think, is she attractive? Yes or no. And then they go, is she nice? Yes or no. I don't think they're asking herself like, what's her hobbies? What does she like to do on a Saturday morning? Quite frankly, I don't think they care, and I think men make up their mind pretty quickly as to whether or not they find a woman attractive. Now, of course, there's a spectrum of whether or not you'd pr pr prefer a more masculine uh, woman or a more feminine woman, but nothing about her is really screaming masculinity to me other than the fact that she's working on a house, which I think is pretty cool. I wish I had any sort of skills when it comes to working on a house. If you put me in this area and said, you need to fix something, I would say, uh, just let me sit this one out. You don't want me to try to fix something <laughs> in this house right now. And all the more so, you know, if you're a man who lives out in the country and likes fixing houses, it's probably nice to have a woman who also likes to do those things and who is pretty and can spend some time with you. I think Samira might be a little bit on the wrong track. And I think all a ton of men came out of the woodworks to come <laughs> and defend this woman and compare them to one another and say, you know, Samira's the little Instagram baddie type who does the makeup and the filler and all this stuff. But men actually prefer this no makeup out in nature type of woman. Honestly, everybody's everybody's different. Um, as far as the accent is involved, I, I love it. I would love to have a Southern accent. <laughs> I would, out of all the accents, you know what? If I could choose a different accent, I think I'd choose a southern one. <laughs> I don't well, mind. We this. asked you guys in a poll here, men, to the men specifically, is Hannah unattractive based on her accent or tomboy interests? Mm -hmm. And we have 76% say no, 4% say yes, and 20% the rest are just show results. So presumably women answering the poll. So clearly, uh, our friend Samira here is very out of touch with the average. And I agree with you, Amala. I mean, men are visual. It's pretty straightforward. I, I've seen since uh, pictures and videos of this girl like wrestling catfish on uh, pulling them out of the river with her bare hands yeah. uh, in a bikini. So I don't feel like this is a particularly like masculine person. It's just a girl with uh, interests that are in the outdoors and okay, building houses or helping her dad do so. Like, uh, that's not something that makes you this hardcore masculine person. And I think the evidence of that is that she has a lot of simps and a lot of guys who are like, this girl's hot. I want to follow her. And I'm sure they follow her also because she does awesome stuff and women follow her because she does cool stuff. But that's all it is. And so I feel like this is clearly just like a troll post on the part of our red pill friend here. But it's nice to see the Internet coming to uh, her defense. They did come to her defense uh, and where people were saying things like this, tomboys are not hot. I repeat, tomboys are not hot. Attraction to tomboys is homosexuality. Oh my <laughs> and gosh. women shouldn't be working outside. What kind of man lets his woman work outside like a man? Oh my goodness. It's just so off base to me. I get it. You like a feminine woman and maybe you don't want her doing stuff like this and uh, you are overcompensating, it seems, for something. But I think a lot of men really like a tomboyish girl who can go out and do these uh, 
predominantly seen as male activities and then can also be a, a woman at the same time. And I'll tell a little side story. So my best friend all throughout like middle school, high school, and now into uh, adulthood, one of my best friends, her name is Audrey. She does some of the most masculine activities I've ever seen. I mean, she's out buck hunting and shooting quail and she's bow hunting and fishing and grabbing catfish out of the, the water and all this different stuff. And I have never seen a bigger simp army than the one that she has on the internet of guys who would chop off their left nut to go hunting with her. <laughs> I'm, I'm so real. <laughs> Men are obsessed with that stuff. Now, it might be a different type of man than these people are, than more, uh, you know, feminine makeup and, you know, beauty queen women are, are looking for, but they very much exist and are, are looking for women like that. Again, I have never seen more simps uh, for a woman than my friend Audrey. They're, uh, they're everywhere and they just want to go haunting with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the... the the same way guys are with like video game girls or girls who are into cars or sports, things like that. They're, you get, you be, you're a girl and you're an influencer in one of those spaces. You're going to do just fine because the men are going to come to you in the droves, whether you're talented or not, especially if you're hot. Now, if you happen to tick both of those boxes, you'll do especially well, but I can't help but think of uh, the, the horseshoe theory idea mm -hmm. where there's like an equal and opposite of everything. Mm -hmm. And we recently saw that video of the guy who was dating a trans girl and he's like, I'm not gay. I just have a trans girlfriend. That doesn't make me gay. And I feel like the horseshoe other end of that is uh, if you like a tomboy, then you're gay. It's right. Like, so dumb. It is so dumb. It's just like, <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Can we be so real for a second? And I guess, I don't know, there's a need now to kind of put down women who show these lifestyles. And it's just like this duality that's ever present on the internet of like one side fighting the other. And if, if you don't think women should be masculine, you have to denounce all forms of masculinity in women. And that even means when they try to renovate a house because that's men's work. It's just like, dude, come on now. Don't be, you don't have to be so smooth brained about it. There are plenty of women who would, you know, love to renovate a house. Plenty of women who would prefer that a man come and do it. There are plenty of women who like to, you know, throw on a dress and doll themselves up. Plenty of women who will put on some overalls and, you know, just want to be outside and, and out in nature. Doesn't make them less feminine overall. It's just a simple activity that they like to engage in that maybe is typically more masculine. I think we all have those little odds and ends about ourselves that uh, don't fall into the typical boxes that one would expect. And yeah, just singling out the renovation angle is so weird to me. You have like the Joanna Gaines types and the Paige Davises on trading spaces like that mm -hmm. are renovating houses and stuff. So it's just so dumb. But we did get a super chat here from Loretta Jean. Uh, we read $50 super chats immediately. It says, I've missed y'all so much while on vacation. Uh, went to the Drake and J. Cole concert in New Orleans. Best concert I've been to thus far. On another Ooh. note, most men in the South love women who show interest in their hobbies. Yeah, I mean, 100%. I think, like, men, for the most part, want somebody who's at least going to be somewhat interested in their hobbies, at the very least wants to listen to them. Also, shout out to J. Cole. I do love J. Cole. I went and saw him when I was in high school in Orlando at the Amway Center, and he was awesome. I've never seen Drake, though, although I'm not, like, a huge Drake fan, but definitely love J. Cole. So I bet that was a fun, fun concert. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want a partner who you can't share the things you do with them? I understand that for some, the dynamic is I have my wife and, you know, I'll spend time with my wife, but like the weekends are for the boys and we go out on our hunting trips and golfing and the wife stays home for all that, which is fine. There's the accent. Yeah, there's, that is, I actually want a male Southern accent. That's yeah. what I want. Uh, if I could switch it out. Um, but yeah, I think even better than that is a woman who's like, oh, I'd love to learn to hunt or I, I'd love to experience that with you. And then goes out and does the things that you're interested in, much like you would hope that the man you're with is at least somewhat interested in the things that you like to do or somewhat supportive of the things you like to do. I think it'd be way worse if you're in a relationship where you just sort of stay in your two opposite poles and never interact with the things that each other loves, even if you have to pretend to love it. 
or pretend you're interested. That's a very, I think, important part of relationships and having a healthy dynamic within a relationship. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've become more of a reader since uh, marrying my wife, who is a total bookworm. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. And we both were already into like college football. She went to University of Georgia. I went to LSU. So we both were like fans of that. And now we like try to go to a game a year uh, for each of our teams and follow co- college football together. So we have some shared interests, but like, I like to play Halo uh, video games when I have some free time and she gives me space to do that while she reads or whatever. So we have like divergent interests. I like to play golf and I play beach volleyball. She'll come to the beach and read a book while I do that. So it, I, f- I feel like it, it all works out when you just have a healthy respect for each other and are willing to compromise a little bit in order to demonstrate your your love for that other person. But I wanted to ask you, where do you think the line is between like expressing interest or being willing to uh, be interested in someone's, your, your significant other's interests mm-hmm. and the personality catfishing that you've talked about on the show, where you're just pretending to be somebody completely different and just adopting their interests in hopes that they will like you. Yeah, I think it's more about how honest you are in your pursuit of, of their interests and being really straightforward of like, oh, this is not something that I would typically do or typically find value in, but I see value in it because you see value in it. And I want you to be able to do something that makes you happy. When I started dating John, he loves UFC. I could not watch people fight. I would literally be like this because I can't. I, as soon as there's blood involved, as soon as there's blood involved, I'm out. I have to watch through through my fingers. And now we've been dating for how long? I don't know. A, a long time. What did I watch this past weekend? UFC 299. And did I watch through my fingers as Sean O'Malley need Marlon Vera in the face? Absolutely. I watched <laughs> through my fingers. But now it's like an interesting thing. Now I know more about like fighting and MMA than I would have ever known in the past and you learn new things and you actually I think through trying to be interested and and learn new things you can actually generate interest in something that you would never have typically wanted uh, to know anything about Uh, also did any of you guys watch UFC 299 drop it in the uh drop it in the comments down below I'm telling you the knee to the face was diabolical it was diabolical indeed <laughs> now amala's like more blood more blood and yeah right adopted the interest right? yeah right no <laughs> i still if it, as soon as there's blood your girl the the hands are over the face um and yeah i did not i do not like like sean o'malley i don't know what it is that i don't like about him but you can't the, the fight was he's he's great he's a very very good fighter and you can't deny it so i had i said let me shut up let me shut up after i watched all all that go down did you watch taylor no i didn't i was watching the uh, uh a golf tournament this weekend watching scotty scheffler uh win it all but uh i didn't i did not catch the ufc unfortunately but i fair do like enough it. fair enough yeah yeah we we do like ufc i've come around to it most definitely now lastly we're gonna talk about kate middleton <laughs> guys y'all know i'm not too up to date with the royal family. Uh, But you have you have Kate and you got William. And a lot of people are speculating. And there's a big conspiracy theory that is taking over the internet right now that Kate Middleton is missing, or something is wrong medically. Some people are saying that she's passed, which is even crazier. But it all starts on on Christmas Day. This was the last time that Kate Middleton was seen going on a little Christmas outing with the royal family. And since then, she's sort of been under wraps. You've gotten a little bit of news uh, from the the palace that she had undergone a serious abdominal surgery and that was why she was sort of staying out of the public eye and people have been wondering where's Kate where's Kate where's Kate a small photo was released of her inside a car and they were stating this is the first time we've seen uh, Kate Middleton publicly and that I believe was the day I appeared on Pierce Morgan's so that would have been at some point last week but people are saying the image is blurry it doesn't look like Kate her, her face looks fatter this is not Kate Middleton and we have yet to see a photo of her actually out and about in clear view doing whatever it is Kate Middleton would do on a typical day. Now, as I said, I'm not so familiar with the royal family, the inner dynamics of how this works and how public outings works for them or how often that would really be. But where oxygen and gasoline was added to this fire was with this post on X. Now, 
This was posted supposedly uh, by the prince and princess, and this shows Kate Middleton with her children. And this was posted on Mother's Day, and they were saying, you know, Happy Mother's Day. This is a photo that William took of the kids and I. And immediately people were sussing this out and saying, there ain't no damn way. William took such a uh, professional photo of you and the children. Then, of course, the Internet sleuths started to look into the photo and zoom in to different features. And they found these little changes like this. Her, her wrist is clearly not where it's supposed to be. Now, some people are saying this could be a Photoshop mistake and that they did a composite of a bunch of different images. And that's what made the wrist all out of whack. Uh, there's other problems here where you can see things aren't quite matching up. The pattern on her skirt isn't matching up. Now, this, this original photo had circulated on a ton of different outlets, and people were saying, here's this photo of Kate Middleton and her children, and they were posting it in their respective articles. But the speculation over this image being fake or doctored got so bad that the Associated Press actually killed the image and let all of their clients know to no longer use this image as it has been doctored. So of course, this fanned the flames of the conspiracy theory that she is somehow deceased or in harm or she's missing. And again, I don't know. Oftentimes I say, if you hear hoofbeats, think horse, not zebra, which means we want to think more typically, more conventional about what could be happening here rather than jumping to some crazy conclusions. But I will say it is weird. But I don't know how the palace operates. Clearly, they're not very open about the inner workings of their family and what's typically going on behind closed doors. So I can't imagine they're going to be in this case. You'd imagine that they would just clear things up and say, you know, hey, guys, Kate's just sick. She's having a rest. She doesn't want to see publicly or she had some problems with her surgery or, you know, just go out and tell people what's going on. But we, we've yet to hear that. So just keeping you posted on an ongoing conspiracy that is continuing to unfold as to where Kate Middleton is. And the whole Internet seems to have united around Internet sleuthing and finding out what is going on with this woman to no avail so far. And I have no theories. I'm going to say that right now. I have no clue of what's going on here. This is where, again, I feel like we need uh, conspiracy theory music and we need to get you a tinfoil hat right. during these segments so that you can just put that on <laughs> yeah. so everybody knows speculation that's happening. It, yeah, my first thought on this, though, was, you know, do you want to create an incentive if you're the royal family uh, to wear or a precedent to wear if there's some kind of speculation about you that you respond to that and now that they'll have to respond to any kind of, of uh, speculation that's happening on sure. the internet. So I could see like some reticence to to want to do that. And I know that like brevity and only, you know, issuing these very like short dignified uh, statements that are very often aloof and, mm -hmm. you know, just very short uh, is kind of their MO. But at the same time, the amount of speculation, I mean, you haven't been seen in months and uh, this does seem like it could be solved with something so simple as like a wave, you know, catching her walking to get her hair done or something or like those, those kind of candid moments. And there's probably also an element of uh, like you talked about on the Piers Morgan show, how pictures were being suppressed in Britain mm -hmm. um, by the British media, like the, because the British media is in cahoots with the royal family, family presumably, right. and they have certain deals in place. So maybe they do have certain evidences that they're not putting out there or whatever. But I don't know. It's it's so fascinating because it all feels so dumb on the one hand, but it's also like it's kind of there's something here. So uh, it's it's worth paying attention to a little bit. Yeah, it's so funny when the Internet goes at something, how hard they go at it and how how suspicious it can truly make you feel. And you do have to sort of take stock of your own bias toward feeling that suspicion and sort of calm yourself down a little bit because they'll be posting some creepy stuff. I mean, here's a post where somebody tried to find out how this image was doctored and where they got the photo of Kate's face, and they're speculating that it actually came from a Vogue cover that Kate had previously been on. And forgive me, I don't know exactly what year she was on this Vogue cover, but if you scroll through and compare it and you lay it over, it looks pretty similar. And then they have this video sort of showing you what it would look like if they doctored the Vogue image onto that doctored photo that you then saw, and it looks pretty legit. <laughs> like, it does look like they just pulled her face 
from the Vogue cover and said, hey guys, everything's fine. I'm here with the family. Happy Mother's Day, which is just, you know, a weird thing to do. An oversight at the very least, and then a weird, suspicious, conspiratorial thing to do at most. <laughs> uh, but you know, that mother, that princess right there is not, not real. real. I'm telling you <laughs> right now. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I hope it's just, you know, an intern who made a very big mistake and decided to uh, tweet this out and maybe got approval from somebody who didn't know how to check the finer details in a photo like that. And hopefully everything is fine and uh, Kate Middleton is doing OK. We're bound to find out sooner or later, as I don't know that the royal family can keep secret whatever it is they are keeping secret at the moment with all the internet sleuths coming at them from left, right, and center. And with that, guys, we're going to get into your super chats and hear from, from you guys. How do you feel about the many stories we've covered today? And I hope they resolve that Middleton story soon because I will not be getting a wink of sleep until <laughs> we know Where that is Ms. Middleton Kate? is okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's real. Where is she? Uh, um, let's see. At least... Alicia Adams or Ilsia says uh, Dylan is not a transgender and is a disgrace. He's a gay man cosplaying as a trans woman. He has man bits, isn't on hormones, and isn't playing on planning on having surgery. He's a drag uh -oh. queen at best. Sorry. Uh oh, you know what they're going to accuse you of within the trans community? You'll be accused of being a trans medicalist, meaning that you think that trans people have to undergo medical treatment in order to identify as trans, and that is wrong. All they have to do is say that they're a woman and they are a woman. So I'm gonna need you to retract that statement and apologize immediately with tears. Mm -hmm. No, it's just kind of ridiculous. You know, this is the whole point because how do you identify what constitutes a woman? What draws the line when somebody can finally be accepted? For me, it's chromosomes, sorry. Mic drop. Uh, Chloe Bryant says, did you watch the Jubilee episode that dropped on International Women's Day? They changed the title from can 100 women find the perfect body to how does body image affect these 100 women? Women. It was weird. Happy Monday. Yes, I did watch that Jubilee video. I was very curious to see. I... I think it's so interesting to watch the different dynamics between men and women. I think if you put, I'll, and I'll explain the premise of the Jubilee video, it was a hundred women in one room and they're supposed to decide amongst themselves who has the best body. And the way that they decide is by eliminating yourself. So if you think you're not number one or not within the top you know, 50 or whatever, you walk out of the circle and you eliminate yourself. Then they have the internet vote on who the best body is and that determines who the actual perfect body is. So the women pick one, the internet picks one, and we see if they match at the end. Immediately going into the video, I know women are going to be way, like way too nice, way too nurturing towards one another, and they're going to eval validate things that are so clearly not the case. Even if you have different views about body types, we know that society sort of has an, a, a standard towards that, and we know generally what a healthy body looks like. And I knew the women were going to sit there and entertain very unhealthy body types and say, you know what, you you should be the the ideal body type. Now, if you put 100 men in the room, I feel like they'd just be like, no, 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 no. Next. Uh, you look like an action figure. Get up there. You know what I mean? The women just play around. Y'all play too much. <laughs> I couldn't sit through it. It was kind of agonizing a little bit to to watch, but I can understand exactly why they changed the title because you'd have a lot of women saying, how dare you call this the perfect body? It's just a body. And then they go, okay, well, let me change the title to women worrying about their body image or whatever the case is. It's just the way women are. It's, it's the... Uh, it is the juxtaposition between the, the female and the male brain. It is a very, very real thing. Women play around too much. <laughs> Y'all play too much. <laughs> you want to be nice yep and it's the same stuff that like comes up in relationships where men are like i don't know what she's thinking i can't read her mind like because there's like more indirect communication right. similar energy we're just different y'all we're just different yeah, just but like when it comes to matters of the truth dude if i was on that show i would just be like immediately i'm gonna walk off i'm gonna i know it's not me where's sydney sweeney who looks the most like sydney sweeney and put her up on the pedestal we can solve this in like under 30 seconds if as long as we're being real with one another but we refuse to be real with with one another <laughs> oh man what was it i think it was an always sunny episode or maybe parks and recreation where they do some kind of pageant 
And it's like the whole episode, there's all this drama back and forth about mm-hmm. like the competition and the different skills that they exhibit and their speaking ability or whatever. Right. And then at the very end, they're like, so who's the winner? And he's like, yeah, the hot one, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like everybody knew the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly how it goes. Um, which you probably could not get an episode like that made these days. But no. I digress. Uh, House of Has says, wow, I'm early for the live show. Last time I was this early to your lives, the French president was married to a woman. Now it's a transformer. Uh, France will never escape their tucked status. Am I Whoa, to say I don't know what's going on over there. I'm sorry. I'm not too familiar with the inner workings of the, the French uh, French politics and who the transformer is. But uh, wow. Thank I you for making it that, early. Like Macron, isn't he married to like... A much older woman, like he's in his late mid late forties, and she's like seventy. I did hear that. Cron wife. But I don't know what that, that makes her a transformer. Bridget, Bridget Macron. I don't know who this is, so I can't speak uh, to her or her character. She does look considerable amount older than that young man. But I'll let me shut my mouth. <laughs> We're, we are accepting conspiracy theories today, so <laughs> Transformer Bride of uh, French uh, Prime Minister is great. Um, we did get a $50 one from Sansumi, so he's at the front of the line. Says, been only able to catch live show offline lately, but it's still really good, especially the Piers Morgan debate call. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad. I'm glad. We, we of course, always leave our lives up so that you guys can watch them afterwards, and hopefully they have the same energy when you watch them later. Let me know. If not, but I'm glad that you can catch him and I'm glad you got to be on this one live. Uh, Ilsia Adams again says, so International Women's Day 2024. Dylan, the gay man cosplaying a woman is idolized. J.K. Rowling's de- demonized for defending women from <laughs> fake trans women. Yay. Yeah, y'all, the math is not mathing on this one. I would love, I love J.K. Rowling though. I would love to have her on the show. We could unpack yeah, all this mess. Goals right now. It is goals. Y'all got a connection. Let us know. <laughs> Hit us up, JK. <laughs> uh, Oaxaca says, let the lie come into the world. Let it even triumph, but not through me. The simple step of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Yeah. Yep. He quoted it more accurately than me. Thanks. Yeah, it's true. It's like, and you don't have to do much to not do that. It's not like you have to disavow people or come at them or give them backlash. You just have to not participate in validating what is not true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just put me in the matrix already says, hey there, A and Tay, I'm very compassionate. I identify people for themselves that they are 304s when they act like it. I'm oh spreading gosh. the truth unbiasedly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I don't think it's possible for you to do that unbiasedly, given the history on this show. <laughs> yeah. In a vacuum, maybe, but yeah. I know you too well. We do. Uh, Kwasakule says, hey, guys, the Gaga backlash fuels why I started following you because your actual beauty with brains and many celebs don't have brains. Their stances are L's. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Yeah, I, I do like Lady Gaga's music. She has some some good tunes, a, a ton of bops. But uh, yeah, the stance on this is missing, missing for me. Uh, Oaxaca again says, hey, Taylor, great minds think alike, thought of the same quote. I won't participate. Respect, yes. Participate, no. I have enough to worry about in life. Yeah. Oh, so he must have posted that quote before I He beat you to uh, the punch. Yeah. Like, oh, well done. Very cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good framing as well. It's like, I'll, I'll respect you. I'll have compassion, but I'm not going to be compelled to say untruths knowingly. Right. right. That's all it is. Uh, Sweet P says, just showing support. So let's save women, real women. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is the, the I guess the movement of our of our time or the the issue of our time. It's very very real. Uh, Noah says the crux seems to be an assumption that disagreeing with LGBT about their identity is hateful. Can we diffuse that slash discuss human identity in general? Right. That's the whole point. You should be able to have these conversations and discussions, even from, you know, a dissident perspective without being seen as somebody who's fueled by hatred and, and violence. And that's where we've really fallen off is being able to label words as violence or hate speech or things like that. This is where... Uh, the, the train falls off the tracks, essentially, because it's not violence. It's not hate speech. It is just criticism of an ideology that, quite frankly, warrants criticism. Yeah, great point, Noah. Celtic Blacksmith says, Clown World is getting too clown worldy. Uh, <laughs> I propose we all chip in and buy some land in Montana to start a self-sustaining 
Amalisha commune. <laughs> it's sounding culty. It's sounding like uh, a cult that's going to be uh, raided. <laughs> Leave one cult to join another. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, Lord. Um, Halus Ag says, what did you think of your two friends, Candace Owens and Destiny, having a conversation? I personally thought Destiny did slightly better than Candy. I didn't watch, to be honest. I saw some clips on uh, Twitter about it where uh, Candace came after him for encouraging women to be 304s, as they say these days. And then he went back at her. They seem pretty evenly matched for the most part, but I didn't listen to anything else. Um, they seem to have missed each other on, on that clip because obviously, uh, what was, what was it she saying? She was saying that you're encouraging an unhealthy lifestyle and destiny said, how do you know it's unhealthy? Among men. Yeah, think, yeah. Yeah. So he was missing her. He should have just said, yeah, it's unhealthy, but I think people should be able to do what they want and it's not my place to judge them. That's the proper stance to take. You shouldn't defend the stance that having sex with 20 men in a day is somehow healthy. That makes no sense. Uh, but from a philosophical perspective, you can defend not wanting to judge those people or allowing them to make unhealthy choices. Um, and then I forget what Candace's point was, but she did something that I disagreed with too in that very same three minute clip. So I was kind of like, even <laughs> y'all are even, <laughs> there's something even here. There you go. Put me in couch. She can argue about people's <laughs> positions better. <No. laughs> Mediant. And then she, I saw another clip where she was like unpacking this whole, um, puff daddy conspiracy slash, mm -hmm. uh, lawsuit. That came Rabbi Shmooey thing. Like, the whole rap industry. Yeah. So which is, a lot there's going some on smoke there. there, I'll give you that. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Those rappers are no good. Wildin'. Yep. Um, Manny Petty says, I answered the poll even though I'm not a man. Oops, I'm bisexual. Every guy I've had a crush on growing up uh, liked my sister, the tomboy. Huh, there you go. What do they say? Um, I forget what they say. You're not a, you're a, you're a guy's girl? A lot of guys like guys, girls who like, you know, like doing boy stuff and like cars and stuff like that. Um, you know, Sydney Sweeney is a good example. She like doesn't she repair vintage cars and has like a whole TikTok where she does that. And men are obsessed with her because she does that. And she's also hot. The bottom line is, are you hot? <laughs> that's literally it. <laughs> that's, it's so that's it's one. Egg. They're yeah. simple brained. OK, the bottom line is, are you hot for the most part? And it doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, are you hot and are you nice? I should clarify. Sorry. Hot and nice. Hmm. Uh, Celtic Blacksmith again says, what could be manlier than being with slash satisfying a tomboy? It's uh, easy to out masculine a dainty princess. You'd have to be Chuck Norris to top Hannah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You, like I said, when, you, when you're looking for somebody, you have to assess their masculine energy and then you have to top it as a man typically. So that would be quite the challenge. Roxy Rantz says, what is your opinion on non-black hip hop slash rap artist gatekeeping or appropriation? Sorry if this is off subject, but I'm curious black. to hear your thoughts. I'm cool with it. So long as you're good at it. That's just the thing. Don't like there's a lot of artists who like uh, get famous. And I'm like, this is not good. If I'm going to recommend, I guess, a non-black rapper, who, who can I think of right now? There's a girl named Wynn. She's like this blonde white girl. W-Y-N-N-E. Kills it. Every time kills it. You should look her up. Um, she makes some really good, really good rap music. That'll be my recommendation of the day. All right. Catch me bumping. Win the gym <laughs> Win. Yeah, she's tomorrow. cool. <laughs> she's cool and, and good for the gym. 100%. Uh, Oaxaca says if your girl rolls up her sleeves and helps out with a hammer, then cleans up with a little black dress for a night on the town. OMG goddess see there you go men are into that the amount of men that came to the defense of this woman was insane astronomical numbers <laughs> if she ever needs a husband she can just go online uh, she'll find somebody who's who's ready simp army has been recruited mm -hmm. <laughs> lyman de coconut i see what you did there <laughs> says uh i'll push back on men only caring about those two questions those provide an initial foundation before sure. you get to know them but interests and hobbies matter i personally love it when women have unconventional interests yeah 100 percent. i think there's a lot more room to play within the interest though and a lot more that men will accept as far as hobbies i think for the most part a man is not going to stop dating you because you have a certain hobby he's not going to be like you like to fix cars can't date that or like you like to renovate houses can't date that you like to knit i don't want to date you anymore but if you're not nice and he's not attracted to you that's a surefire way 
that he is never going to want to uh, to see you again. That'll get you out of the relationship quicker than any hobby that you could possibly take on, unless it's like, I don't know, something crazy. <laughs> okay, but if you flip that, would a woman lose interest in a man over him having an unconventional hobby, do you think? Mm, no. Or like a hyper-feminine one? I think women get the ick easier, yeah. Yeah. So if it, if it gives them the ick, I do think women get the ick 100% easier. Like, we've, we've been through this on the show where women list off things that give them the ick, and it's like he dropped a quarter on the ground and bent over to pick it up, and I saw his butt crack or something, and then I couldn't date him anymore. <laughs> like, that is literally, you can literally flip a switch in a woman's brain where she's like, ah, ah, I'm not attracted anymore. I think that's a little bit harder for men. Again, you might move down in the categories for men, but if a man is attracted to you, he's attracted to you it's just the level of attraction like is it i just want to have fun with her is it i want to date her is it i want to marry her and you can move around but like women you can just drop off a cliff like that <laughs> from dropping a quarter on the ground <laughs> yeah it's like that the tiktok series that we still we haven't done a video on it but we've, we've wrecked you a couple of them but it's like the mm -hmm. list and you like it plays a girl saying something like that <clears throat> like he breathed too loud and then it's like goes cuts to this list it's like a screenshot of a note in the phone and he just scrolls for like 500 entries uh -huh. and then it's like adds that to the list yep 100 percent. no a girl the other day said like oh yeah i really liked this guy and we went on a few dates and then he sat down and he crossed his legs and she was done she was done with him after that he <laughs> sat down and he crossed his legs and she was like nope <laughs> I can't do but then it. you also can't manspread because Anymore. that's like alpha right. posturing or right. whatever. You know? So it's just, I don't want to go. <laughs> but I will say, like, it, it kind of can go both ways. Like, if you think of the, the show Seinfeld, like, uh -huh. Jerry was notorious for finding something wrong with right. the girls that he was dating. So sure. super arbitrary. Like, she eats her peas one at a time. Sure. You know? right. And that was like a deal breaker. No, so fair enough. I think it's, it's generally a picky thing, but. That's a fictional show and just one guy's personality. Yeah. Uh, right. For this, these ick videos seem to be more of a, a trend among the young ladies today. Yeah. There's always exceptions to the rule. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nick Braun, Braun says, <laughs> I am not gay, G H E Y. I have relationships with women. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying. <laughs> it was up for debate uh, until you clarify. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's responding to the accusation of the the men who like tom tomboys. Maybe I don't know mm. the G H E Y thing. Not up with the, the kids' lingo these days. Mm -mm. Um, it's all good. Just put me in the matrix already. Says mm -hmm. Hannah sounds like a keeper, even though she's not Latina or Asian. Into that three hundred four Samira, I say afuera y no regresas. Uh, <laughs> like please, go away and don't come back this week. Oh, okay. uh, get out and don't come back. But by the way, stop simping over Amala, guys. Oh my gosh, you guys, so much to say. Uh, yeah, no, Hannah does seem like she's pretty chill. I mean, I don't know that much about her uh, off a of TikTok, but the TikTok did not raise any red flags for me. Definitely not. Uh, mm -hmm. Celtic Blacksmith says, I'll simp on whoever I want, Alex. Keep it up and I'll start simping for you, big boy. LMAO. Uh, I like your pretty mouth. There you uh -oh. go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is going to turn into something. This is the start of something new, as they say in High School Musical. No. Maybe he doesn't need to go in the Matrix after all. Found love. <laughs> right here on the channel. Right here on the uh, channel. <laughs> Well, Haka again says, to be one, you have, must be there for each other's interest. If you truly care, you will eventually find your way because it is part of your partner. Right. A hundred percent. You want to like value the things that your partner values to some extent. It doesn't have to be to the same extent that they do, but just like have a little bit of appreciation for what they appreciate. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, I care about you, so I will care about what you care about because I care about you. It's all mm -hmm. it really comes down to. Mm-hmm. Uh, son, see me. We got that one. Matthew N says, Hey, Amala, I've said this once before, but every video reminds me again that I am deeply, deeply in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, sometimes I, I like read these and, you know, I'm, I'm expecting like, <laughs> I don't know what's coming by the end of it. And then, and then you get a curveball. Like and I'm like, oh, I maybe shouldn't have started reading this one, but <laughs> alas. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> there, there have been worse. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pink Puma says, if Kate is in the spotlight, it will only take five minutes before Megan comes sniffing for the attention. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. It's so funny because people still talk about Megan a lot. Like Pierce was talking about Megan when I was on there. I'm like... I get she really did. She did a number. She did a number on the UK. Um, and uh, 
We'll see. We'll see what's next for Meghan Markle. I don't know what's next for her. I haven't heard from her in a while. Or maybe I just haven't been paying attention. But we'll see what she pops up with next. <laughs> Won't be long, I'm sure. Yeah. Natty A says, uh, Amala, you got to debate more on those shows. You are way too mature and polite on there. <laughs> I thought, what? You want me to be more aggressive? That's not my style, y'all. I thought I was aggressive in that interview. I got off, uh, off of that and I was like, oh, too aggressive. Could have been calmer. <laughs> So if you guys yeah, want me, a little sass. if you guys want me to be more aggressive, I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. It's then not then it Piers Morgan won't be able to say you're such a breath of fresh air. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. More and more from just put me in the matrix. Amla, how was Las Vegas? Which hotel did you say? Did you win any money? I stayed at the MGM Grand last year, and I'm trying to go again this year. I don't gamble, so I did not win any money. I went there for a concert because Nicki Minaj was there. It was the worst concert I've ever been to in my life. Um, but I kind of anticipated that because I we bought the tickets before her whole like drama and all this stuff with her and Meg Thee Stallion or whatever. It was the worst concert ever. Her guests that she brought on for the concert, which were Monica and Tyga, killed it but like she started the concert out like super low energy was missing every other lyric was did not sing at all so every single like chorus that you guys hear in her songs where she sings she's had the mic all the way down over here and was just letting it play took like five breaks uh, within the concert, like would start, do a section, take like a five minute break, start, do a section, take a five minute break where they would just like play visuals. It was actually the worst concert I've ever attended. So sorry to any barbs out there who really love Nikki. It was horrible. And I brought my boyfriend cause I was like, oh, he should experience like something like this and go and see it. And we just sat there like, is this for real right now? <laughs> like <laughs> there's no way people think that this is good there's no way no way Tragikistan, as you say and i'm a big uh, nikki fan y'all know yeah, that someone in the chat i saw was asking if you like nikki minaj and so <laughs> yeah i do I've, I've, answer, I've listened to nikki since i don't know like high school middle school i've always uh really liked nikki i still do like her music and we went out afterwards and the dj was playing nikki and we were like this is great uh it just did not translate to the stage it was one of like the laziest I just can't. One of the laziest, worst. Like we were, I literally looked at my friend and I was like, it feels kind of weird singing the songs and like engaging and dancing when it legitimately seems like something is wrong with her. Like something is off. Like she doesn't seem like she's all there. So I don't know if she was just having a bad night. Don't come for me, Barb's. But it was not good. Does she have a residency there or was it like a tour stop? Tour. Tour stop. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Tragic. Tragicistan. Tragic. Uh, okay. Diva Dawn says, Amala, get out of California. Move to Tennessee. I'll, I'll second that. Uh, <laughs> we have several West Coast refugees. Pack up you and your adorable BF and get out of the commie regime before it gets worse. I was raised there and I would not move back for anything. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it's going to get worse. I'm not going to lie. I actually kind of like it here. <laughs> like I'm actually kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of chilling. I have a safe apartment. Things are quiet where I live for the most part. Of course, LA has many its problems, but, uh, good food good friends i'm chilling good job so i'm not moving anywhere in the foreseeable future but i recognize that it is a risky choice <laughs> a risky <laughs> choice to make yeah uh, i mean it's it's tough it's the best and the worst at the same exactly. time and, uh, exactly exactly yeah for, i had my my season there i'm grateful for it grateful for my new season but you know yeah uh shelly o'connell says watching from ireland first live uh, you guys are class <laughs> thought all these issues were mad but now the woke mob has reached ireland it's everywhere oh yeah you guys are feeling it i'm sure you guys are feeling it there's many a story out of ireland where these crazy things are uh, are happening so it's no surprise and i hope that it didn't come across as mocking i actually love irish accents yes so. <laughs> we're never mocking you guys uh, Chelsea M says, uh, love you guys. Not relevant, but I sent before about my future show getting out of adult industry and keeping you reminded that you said you want to see it. I will let you know when it airs. Oh, okay. Getting out of the adult industry, like the adult industry. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll check it out. I've, I've been thinking about doing a video on stuff like that because there's been many a story of, uh, adult industry creators, like committing suicide recently. And I think that's really interesting of course you will never know exactly why but it's certainly an interesting topic to 
unpack. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that sort of story, people getting out of the industry, people regretting their time in the industry or, you know, worse. Uh, the Taylor fan club says, I disagree with, or I agree with David Don get out while you can. Uh, I want to see the all blacks play against Fiji in San Diego in July, but I really fear going to Cali. Ah, if you're just going to be here for a little trip, you're going to be fine. Like, don't, don't worry. Things are, things are more chill than maybe what you would see in the news. And if you want to come here by all means, now what I recommend you move here, maybe not. Like I said, I've got like such a good setup. My man has such a good setup that it, I don't see us leaving any time in the, in the foreseeable future, but I can certainly get behind the sentiment that one should, uh, get out whilst things are get outable <laughs> and not wait until they aren't. Uh, Chelsea M also says also only women should be celebrated on women's day. Let's celebrate Southern girl, not pretend girl. Yeah. I mean, you would think right now, I now I kind of stand against the premise of a women's day altogether. Cause I just don't see the point in it. Just like the same with black history month and pride month and all this stuff. I'm just like, we don't need any of these days or months or weeks, but if you're going to have one, at least stick to the standard of what a woman actually is in the meantime. But here we are. So <laughs> not going to be the case. Uh, Anisha says, happy Monday. Just one little thing. Could we please stop calling people 304? I find it dehumanizing. I am personally against any form of name calling. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I go either way on it. I'm not too offended by things like that. Uh, and I have a feeling that comment is going to make them do it more. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't feel any certain type of way. Uh, about the the 304 comment. I don't think you'll typically hear me use that uh, in my videos where we're referencing these topics. I think you'll only hear that during the super chat portion of the that's of the show. <laughs> that's true. It's rarely like yes. you name calling. It's you repeating people. And I, I'll say too, like, it's rarely also going after specific people, mm -hmm. at least when we use it. And it's more like referring to a general one sentiment. of these internet categories that has been represented. And when someone is playing into that caricature, you're saying you're, you're acting like this stereotype. And I think that's okay to talk about for the sake of discussion. But I agree that like a mean spirited name calling is not sure. something that we want to have part of our discourse. hundred percent. Um, Ilsia again says, I keep getting unsubbed from you and other right wing political commentators like Pierce Morgan, Blair White, etc. Funny What's they don't on? unsub me from any left wing. That is so weird. I don't know why that happens. I mean, I'm not surprised. All the bands and the shadow bands and the this and that. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised at all that that might be happening. As far as how you fix that, no idea. I do. I will say we have a relatively low percent of y'all that are subscribed with notifications on. Mm -hmm. And so make sure your notifications are on for when we go live, drop new videos, etc. Because a lot of y'all are saying, oh, I always miss the live streams or I'm late or yeah. barely catching this. And that'll help. Uh, even though for me, it doesn't always work how it's supposed to. And if you have been experiencing issues like that, you got unsubbed or you're not getting notifications, let us know because I do like to hear about that. And yeah. we do have contact with YouTube that we can bring stuff to their attention. Definitely. So, um, just put me in the matrix response to Celtic and says, just because I say stop simping over Ama doesn't mean stop simping over me. Let's all stop simping. Be better Kings. Stop no. giving free attention. Oh my gosh. Give your attention as you're willing to give it. Ladies and gentlemen, make your own personal decision on that. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that way we don't have to argue in the super chats, boys. Pull it together. Oh dear. Annika says, uh, unrelated, I've, but I've got Edward Tulane tatted on my arm. Favorite book, too. You're the coolest, <gasps> Amala. Much love from New Zealand. That it's is getting so crazy over here awesome. Too. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a children's book, like an old school book called The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. And it is one of my favorite books. And I've saved a copy, my original copy, for my future children to uh, read to them. So that is so cool that that book had an imprint on you, literally an imprint on you. Uh, so very, very cool. Love that. I hadn't heard that. That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, Matrix again says, speaking of concerts, I'm going to the Bad Bunny one coming up in two weeks with friends. Amelie, you should go to a Bad Bunny concert. It's better than Nikki. I don't like the style of music. I'm going to be so honest. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of Latin music. Sorry. <laughs> A whole category? Come on now. Sorry. Not all of it. No, some of it. Some of it I do like. Uh, but uh, the Bad Bunny type is... 
not for me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I um so I graduated high school in Panama in Central America, mm -hmm. and all of my classmates were based. Most of them were from Latin America, like Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, etc. And they being there definitely got me exposed to the reggaeton that's very popular sure. in Panama. And uh, I remember the, they'd have like nights where it, I just got exposed to the, to this Latin culture where my school principal was a, a Colombian woman. And the, I went to like a gathering at, at her house once when like some of the students, my classmates were like doing salsa dancing with the principal. And it was just <laughs> like such this like warm, fun, like happy environment and that's just awesome. like cultural. And it was so cool. So that got me, like really warm to that idea. And then uh, mm -hmm. my brother got married in Panama to a Panamanian girl and they had all the reggaeton at their wedding, plus the like, <laughs> merengue and stuff like that. And so got to learn little white boy, you know, <laughs> tipsy white boy trying to dance. To dance. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some, <laughs> some photos I wish weren't uh, in existence, but uh, <laughs> anyways, so I have an appreciation for the Latin stuff, but uh, I get it. It's not teach their own, as you say. Charlize there. Uh, let's see. Celtic again says, Alex, don't deny our love. The entire chat knows we would be wonderful together. I'll even whisper sweet nothings in Spanish to you. Wow. This, is, this is just keeps going. It's an guys. interesting way to combat this. I'm uh, curious to see where this goes. <laughs> Chelsea says, you can interview me. I was, wasn't was OF, but actually adult film out for nearly a decade. I am 31 and turned conservative. Wow. That is a crazy experience. Out for nearly a decade. So you would have not seen... Well, obviously, you would have seen a lot of the industry, but the more like a recent iteration that's like hyper virtual and all over the place and, you know, has expanded so much. It's just just absolutely insane. That's an ins it's such a unique experience as a human being that like obviously not many people can can speak to. It's nuts. Yeah. Uh, Diva Dawn says, I love going back to California when I visit my family, but as long as they're so socialist, the state will be dangerous. Move to Austin, Texas then. Well, <laughs> I've been to Texas a few times. A... Y'all are just trying to get me to move. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I can guarantee you that. But I love your soft pitches for <laughs> the different states you guys live in. I'm still, uh, I'm still, I'm not like a hater, but I'm a little skeptical of Austin. I feel like it's just like uh, LA, LA lights. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a colony for LA minded people who are in the South because that it has better culture and policies that haven't been ruined yet, but they're still kind of bringing that there. Yeah, but I know that there's a lot of cool stuff in Austin and cool people. Every leftist that I knew back in too, Florida so. moved to Austin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's where they all went. Every little lefty little girl went to Austin back from my hometown. I know that that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick Brown says, could you say that are always after me lucky charms in an Irish accent? There you go. Me? I don't know if that was to me or you, but I was. Uh, Taylor just did it perfectly. You do not want me to do that. <laughs> You do not want me to do that. It's trust. Oh, dear. Trust. Uh, Kaisa Kai says, uh, thank you from England. Hug, hug. I am a socialist learning idealist, leaning idealistic libertarian who's always denied in Whoa. the lefty Orwell or who has always denied the lefty Orwell predisposition. Horrifyingly awake with occasional panic attacks. Hug, hug. You help. Hug. Oh, well, welcome. I don't understand your political ideology in the way that it was framed, but I need to unpack that a little bit further. I think I'm a socialist who's also libertarian. I can figure that out. I think I can figure uh, that one out. Welcome here. Everybody's welcome here, regardless of what you believe, so long as you're capable of having open discussions and contending with ideas that you may not share. And last but not least, Natty A says, off subject, but did y'all watch Saltburn? I just watched it in OMG. I did watch Saltburn. It was a crazy film. Not that crazy. Not as crazy as people were making it out to be. Like, there's people walking out of the theater and, like, collapsing and being so dramatic and all this stuff. I'm like, okay. It wasn't the craziest movie. Um, I just think your description of, people... of it made me not want to not watch it. <laughs> not because you said it was bad, but because yeah, you said like, that there it was just, craziness in there. It just depends on what type of shows you watch. Like if you've watched like HBO series or like Game of Thrones or True Detective or things like that, then you're going to walk into it and be like, okay, I can understand why some people might be a little like triggered by this or think it's super weird or kind of out there. But if you are used to content like that and you go watch Saltburn, you'd be like, okay, 
okay, it's definitely weird. It's definitely like avant-garde pushing the boundaries a little bit. Um, but yeah, I thought it was an okay film. I don't know what I rate it, maybe like a seven out of 10. The acting was good. Um, my favorite scene was Venetia at the end, her monologue at the end of the film. That's all I'm gonna say. I won't give any spoilers. Lila says I missed hers and I'm so sorry, Lila. Oh, I no. did. Uh, it says her original one says, uh, while we're on the topic of women being considered attractive, do y'all think that pretty privilege exists? Uh, as an impressionable teen girl, that idea terrifies me. Both of you are gorgeous too, so I wonder how you guys see it. Oh, uh, pretty privilege of 100,000 billion trillion percent exists. And I can tell you as somebody who's been on like both ends of the perception of pretty privilege is 100% real and it's just observable in the world. Um, yeah, when I was like in middle school, high school, ugliest kid one day i'll have to show you pictures <laughs> just objectively not cute which is so funny and i had all these really pretty friends and of course they got a lot of attention and free this and free that and uh then you sort of move over and as you mature and you get to you know be more comfortable within your body and your own self-perception you become more confident and then you start to reap the benefits of what is a, a clearly existent pretty privilege and men have it women have it um, you are assumed to be nicer when you're pretty. A lot of times you're assumed to be more intelligent when you're pretty. You get a lot of free things when you're pretty. And of course, there's also the opposite side of things. A lot of people assume that attractive people don't have problems or that their problems are not as big as the plights of those who are less attractive. It's always, you know, a, a seesaw. Uh, when it comes to that idea. But I think there is a distinct amount of privilege that you gain by being a seen as conventionally attractive. Yeah, I agree. I saw mm -hmm. a crazy stat recently that was like some insane percentage of uh, male CEOs are like above six foot four, six foot five, something mm -hmm. like that. And like it's totally irrelevant, you know, immutable characteristic, but the way that plays into maybe that person's psychology and the yeah. way that plays into the other people's psychology as they're coming into their uh, their life and their career or whatever, somehow that dynamic ends up having a, a disproportionate amount of uh, tall men in those domains. And it's I think it's like uh, if you don't fit that conventional standard, then uh, obviously that's not everything. And uh, mm -hmm. it's it's silly to put so much weight in that. It's, some, it's like a silly human psychological thing that we do. And if you do fit that standard, I think it's easy to like use that as a crutch and you are more apt to have blind spots mm -hmm. in your development to where you're only relying on that natural advantage. And it may be that you have character flaws that are being covered up by that, or maybe yep. you have deficiencies in your competence or abilities that are overcome just by your natural characteristics. So it's just, it's just a part of humanity and, and being alive and that we all have to contend with. Uh, but I think with what we can agree on is it's it's not everything. The looks aren't everything. This they're, they're superficial, and uh, whether you fit the standard or you don't, I think we all have things to overcome. Whether it's the insecurity of not fitting it or the over reliance on those on fitting it, if you do. So. Hundred percent. I didn't even think to add that to the list of negatives when it comes to like being uh, attractive. You don't have to like contend with things. Or sometimes they're like they have totally deficient personalities, and you'll meet somebody who's like conventionally attractive, but is like the worst human being you've ever met. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, cause they've leaned on that quite a bit. So it's, so it's like kind of, you know, pick which, pick your struggle, I guess. Yep. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for facing as much adversity as possible, but when it comes to genetics, oops, sorry, you just get what you get. That's the un unfortunate part, but you'll see like why all these people are like looks maxing now and stuff like that, which we should do an entire video on is because uh, perception can form reality in a lot of different ways. And if you can have little like hacks and tricks to be perceived as more attractive, you'll find that it can help you a lot in life, but it can also become a crutch. And if you're interested yeah. in that topic, by the way, you should watch the video Amala did a couple weeks ago on reacting to the beauty standards and the plastic surgeon that mm -hmm. reacted to Amala's take on beauty standards and um, unpacking that because there's a lot of uh, discussion around that topic. In yeah, those. pretty privilege is going to get so insane now that pretty is not real anymore. Like it's surgically created beautiful. So now it's not even 
the normal standard of human beings being compared to one each other, one of a, another on uh, attractiveness. It's fabricated attractiveness that is now being compared to normalcy. So whatever pretty privilege we're experiencing right now, it's going to freaking skyrocket exponentially now that you can just surgically modify your face and become prettier. It's going to create a lot of different uh, stratas, I guess, of, of human beings. Well, we'll unpack that another day. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that, was our, that was our last super chat. So okay, thank you guys. Hey guys, that means we are going to be closing out the show today. Thank you guys for hanging with me and talking about all the different topics we discussed a little bit of Dylan Mulvaney, Lady Gaga. Where is Kate Middleton An old Obama clip? Plus, is it unattractive to be a woman tomboy? Let me know your thoughts on all the different topics we discussed in the chat down below and in the comments down below after the show. As always, if you disagree with me, duke it out, but do so respectfully. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we're live. That's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Plus, we post videos for you guys every single day. Tomorrow, we're circling back on the Lake and uh, Riley story, Biden's response, and Trump's response. Two very, very different things, and I can't wait for you guys to check that out. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Monday. We did get one more super chat from Cryptic, who says, Shout out from Kangaroo Land. The internet welcomes every strangeness. Once every village had an idiot. Now the idiots have a village. <laughs> <laughs> Very much true. Well said. Very much true. And an interesting note to close out the show. Thank you so much for that cryptic. And with that, guys, have a fantastic rest of your Monday. Peace. <laughs>